My name is Darren Kedrowski, creator of ZenEdit. Today I'd like to step you through creating your first ZenEdit project. In particular, I'd like to show you how to best leverage the new project dialog to get you up and running as quickly as possible. To access the new project dialog, select File New Project from the main menu. The dialog is implemented using a wizard style with persistent back and next buttons at the bottom, a cancel button, and a finish button. At any time, you can hit Finish to accept the settings that you've made up until that point. However, I'd encourage you to complete the dialog, as it really will help you become more familiar with ZenEdit and some of the time-saving features that are contained in this dialog. So let's step through each pane of this wizard one by one. On this first page, you're given the option to create a brand new project or to use an existing project as a template. If you choose this second option, the program will then allow you to browse for the file on disk that you want to use as the template. And then your new project will effectively become a copy of that project and this wizard will be complete and it'll close. So we're going to select the first option here, create a brand new project, and hit next. The next screen is where we pick the model of Zendrum that we have. Uh, if you have a completely customized Zendrum, don't worry about the trigger layout. Just pick the body that closest matches your Zendrum, whether it's a Z, ZX or an LT or a Zap. Uh, there's also an option here to select the type of board. Uh, at the time of this recording, only 4.0 Zendrums, the Z4 chips are supported. Uh, but in the future, if we add support for 3.0 or if the Zendrum Corporation comes out with a 5.0, uh, you'll be able to select that here. Now at this point, if we were to hit finish, we'd have a project file that essentially would be a factory defaulted Zendrum. So if we hit next here and continue, we're going to start to deviate from the, from the default and start to customize our Zendrum. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Now a brief word about the factory default settings of a Zendrum. Your Zendrum has 16 user setups. That is 16 slots that you can use to customize your layouts. The first 13 are set up for melodic percussion. That by default they use MIDI channel 1. Only the last three, 14, 15, and 16, are set up by default to use MIDI channel 10, which is generally used for percussion. Now what this means is if you are going to be using drums for all 16 setups, you'd normally have to manually go through each setup and change the channel to channel 10. Or conversely, if you're going to be doing mostly melodic performance, the last three channels you'd have to change to channel one or whichever channel that you're going to be using. So this page of the wizard then can really save you some time. Here you tell Zenit whether you're going to be doing mostly drums and percussion or if you're going to be doing melodic performance. And what Zenedit will do is it will set up all the channels accordingly. So for example, if I say I'm going to be doing mostly drums, then every user setup in my project will be set to channel 10, not just the last three. And it doesn't have to be channel 10. You can choose whichever channel that you want from the drop down here. You can also choose the interface or the mapping file here, which will then save you from manually having to set that up for each setup. So for instance, I'm mostly going to be using BFD2. I can select that from the drop down here. And then every user setup will be automatically set up to use that mapping and associated with whichever MIDI channel that we choose here. Also briefly, if we did choose melodic instrumentation, ZenEdit will then place every trigger on those setups in melodic mode, meaning it will show the note name rather than the note number, and it will not show any mapping names, which is a more suitable setup for a non-percussive environment. So to just quickly summarize this page, whichever MIDI channel that we choose here and whichever mapping file that we choose here will simply be applied to every user setup. Now moving on to the next page. Here we have the loadout information for your Zendrum. This is where you tell ZenEdit about anything that you have on your Zendrum that's not a round trigger. It could be jacks, it could be a momentary switch, it could be knobs. The first item in the list is what ships on a standard Zendrum, which is one momentary switch, one trigger jack, usually used for a, a bass pedal for instance, and one CC jack, which could be used for say a hi-hat pedal. Now with the introduction of the Z4 chip, you've also been able to customize your Zendrum. 
So it may be that you may not have the standard allotment of controls. You may have something completely customized. So listed here are some common combinations of controls. Not every possible permutation is listed here, so you should select the one that is the closest match to your Zen drum. And once we're done with this wizard, I'm going to show you how to set all these up manually in case you should ever modify your Zen drum or to get it to be a closer match. So in my personal case, I have one momentary switch and two CC knobs. So I'm going to select that from the list and I'm going to hit next. This final screen allows you to customize the way your Zendrum is displayed on screen. You can select the background image to use and you can apply a tint to it. These settings here are strictly for aesthetics. They have no impact whatsoever on your SysX file. But it may help you visualize things better if your Zendrum on screen looks more like your physical Zendrum. Okay, and so that's it. I'm going to hit finish. And here then is my resultant project file. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is to show you how to manually do all these things that the wizard has done for you automatically. I think that's important for you to be able to see how this is all put together so you, you can better leverage ZenEdit. So I'm going to start off again with a blank project, but this time I'm going to immediately hit finish. Okay, so I'm going to hit new project, abandon these changes, and then hit finish. So now what that's done, it's created a project file, but it's used the default, the factory default SysX for a Zendrum. You remember from before, now setups 1 through 13 all use channel 1, MIDI channel 1, and only 14, 15, and 16 will be set up to use channel 10. Each user setup will also be using general MIDI since we did not select the mapping. Uh, furthermore, this is set up to have a single momentary switch, a CC jack, and a trigger jack, because those are the, the defaults for a Zendrum. So let's start there. I do have a momentary switch on my Zendrum, so that's good. I do not have any jacks whatsoever, so I'm going to have to edit those. This last one here is actually the first of the custom triggers. A Zendrum ships with 24 triggers. You have an option of adding up to six more, up to 30 triggers. You can see them up here, these five. You have to make sure that show unused items is checked or you won't see these, they'll be hidden. But this last one here, which is currently a jack, is actually this missing trigger here. If you max out your Zendrum and use all 30 triggers, you will have to abandon your trigger jack, or at the very least it may be wired in parallel with an existing trigger. So what I'm going to do right now is just return this one to the pool. I'm going to select the trigger. I'm going to go into customization mode. Here you can see the input type is currently trigger jack. I'm going to change that to trigger pad. And you can see now it's rendering as a round pad. And I'm going to just drag it and move it up into the grouping here. Okay, so that leaves me with just three controls on the bottom here. The first is the momentary switch, which we'll leave alone. The second one I'm going to select and change to CC knob, which is what I have on my Zendrum. And same for the third one here. Select it, change it to CC knob, and I'm just going to drag it over here next to the other knob. This, this better represents what I have on my Zendrum. And I may be the only person on the planet that has this particular setup. But this was just to show you how you can go ahead and manually customize these controls if you happen to have a out of the ordinary Zendrum. But I should point out that this was much easier to accomplish using the new project wizard. Okay, the other thing that the wizard did for us was automatically set up our channels and our mappings. Uh, I'm going to quickly show you how to do that manually as well. So I'm going to switch back to edit mode. Uh, I'm going to switch to user setup number 8. This is a setup which in the factory default SysX is normally set up to be channel 1. It's set up for melodic play. And for demonstrative purposes, I want to use this setup to play drums. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control a to select all the triggers on the body. I'm going to go over to basic settings. And I'm going to change the channel to channel 10. 
Channel 10 in general MIDI is used for drums. And since we're using this setup for drums, I'm going to go ahead and rename it. Uh, I can just highlight the name here and type in my kit. There we go. Uh, right now it's using general MIDI. You can tell it's using general MIDI because down here in the corner in, in the gray text, the application shows which mappings are being used. So to change that, I'm going to click on channel mappings here under tools. And for channel 10, from the drop down, I'm going to just select BFD2 and hit apply. Now I can apply it to just this setup or I can apply it to every setup in, in the project file. Um, we might as well go ahead and apply it to all of them. Save us some time. That's you know one of the things that the wizard did for us too when we did the new project wizard. When we selected the mapping, it went ahead and you know applied them to all setups. And you can tell down here in the corner now that it is indeed using BFD2. So these triggers, if they were not in melodic mode, would be showing us BFD2 uh, note names, but they're still in melodic note mode, so we got to manually turn this off too. So I'm going to select all the triggers, go over to display, turn off melodic mode, and there we go. So these are all the manual, meticulous steps that I have to take to do what the wizard did for me automatically. And I'd have to do this for every setup, assuming I wanted to use every setup. If I if I'm only going to use setups 14, 15, and 16, which are already set up for channel 10, then I you know it's not such a, such a big deal. But if you actually want to utilize all 16 setups, it can be a pain in the butt. So I encourage you to use the new project wizard. It'll get you up and rolling much faster. And if you don't have a standard Zendrum, if you have custom controls, uh, use, using the new project wizard is just going to get you going a lot faster than meticulously going through and setting up each setup user set up manually. Okay, one last thing while we're on the subject of time savers. Zenedit has a user copy wizard which is very powerful. So one thing you can do is when you have one user set up which is exactly how you want it to be, you can copy that user setup and use it to replace other user setups. So for instance if user setup 16 was a setup that I put a lot of time into getting just right, getting all the triggers dialed in the way I like them, and I want to make a copy of that and place it in say user setup 15 what I can do is go to user setup 16 and from the main menu go to user setup copy from this setup I want to copy the setups in this project okay and hit next now I can select setup 15 that's the destination that's where I want to copy number 16 to if I wanted to copy to every other setup, I could use the shift key and select every other setup. So that when I finish this this wizard then, every setup will look exactly like number 16. I can hit next. You select what I want. I'm just going to use everything. And the parameters, again, I'm going to just use everything. But you can see where you can get some fine grain control here if you only want to copy certain aspects of triggers or only CC's. I, I really encourage you to, to take some time, look through the help file if you have to, but play with these dialogues. There's a lot of power here. Uh, now I'm going to hit finish. Copy complete. And there you go. So now every setup in this project looks exactly like setup 16. You can also use this to restore factory defaults. Um, if there's a setup that I've modified and I want to switch just that setup back to the factory default, again, you can use that, that user setup copy wizard. I can go copy to this setup, copy from the third option here, a factory default setup. And I only want to move it over this existing setup. And everything is fine, everything here, next. And finish. So what that, what that's effectively done is it's done a factory reset on just that one setup. Very powerful stuff. Very quickly, while we're on this subject, you can also reorder your user setups to have fine grain control over them. You simply go to reorder setups. Now these all have the same name now because of that copy operation we did. But assuming they had different names. You could drag them around now. You can also double click them here to 
to rename them in one spot, which is a little faster. So you can set up all your setups right here in this one pane, get them in the order that you want them. Um, again, very powerful stuff. Okay, so I hope this was helpful to you. Again, I encourage you to use the new project wizard uh, when you're creating a new project. I encourage you to use the user copy wizard. Save you some time. You know, when, you, when you get one setup set up the way you like it, just make a copy of it. You can always reorder and rename the setups. You're not, you're not married to a particular order. If you get painted into a corner, you can always do a factory restore on just that one setup. Okay, so that concludes this video. If you have any questions, you can always email me at support at nebaru.com or use the contact link on the ZenEdit website. Thank you very much for watching.